Like all good disasters, we start here in sunny Croydon. More specifically, Croydon College, or maybe here, Croydon University Centre, but the details on this aren't all that clear. Regardless, it is the place today's main character got his UK education. Our person of interest today is Femi Osibona. And spoiler alert, the part about the whole Croydon education was taken from his obituary. But how did he die? Well, Osibona was in Lagos, Nigeria, working as a property developer. And his death was from his own creation. Was Femi a Nigerian Icarus or a victim of shoddy building? Well, wait to find out. Today we're looking at the 2021 Lagos Tower Block building collapse. My name is John and welcome to Plainly Difficult. This video wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for my Patreon and YouTube members. If you'd like to watch my videos, early access and ad free, then you can check it out for as little as £1 per month. Lagos, a country's financial centre. Lagos, like many cities across the world, is a magnet for many people. As somewhere to live and work, the reasons are often financial, cultural and even in the pursuit of power. And again, like any major city, finding somewhere decent to live can be a frustrating and an expensive hobby. This creates housing booms, where developers try to meet demand by constructing residential areas. Hell, just look at South London, it's quickly becoming the land of the high-rise, as more and more social housing stock is sold off to be demolished and rebuilt as wanky high-priced live in the city shoeboxes. Just look at where my dad's side of the family came from, the Haygate Estate off the Old Kent Road, where now you can buy a studio flat for just a small pocket change of £500,000. Sorry, I got a little bit sidelined there. I can go on for days about the ugly towers littering my hometown. But we're of course talking about Lagos, not London today. But although on another continent, it's the same stuff in a different place. Today our setting is in the high wealth area of Ikioi. It connects to Lagos Island to the west and is at the edge of the Lagos Lagoon. It was developed in the 19th and 20th centuries as an area for the rich expatriate British community. As time went on, the expensive area began to see luxury high-rise apartments, shopping malls and very expensive hotels. A successful development can yield big returns. As such, many developers set out to build in the expensive and exclusive part of the city. One such company is Fourscore Homes and Investment Limited. It was registered on May 24th, 2001 as a private company limited by shares. At its head was a person called Femi Osibona with his wife, Oledin, and his two children. These were also named as co-directors as well as two other members of the public. The company was registered to a house owned by Pa Osibona, Femi's father. Femi had a bit of a rags to riches story, as noted in the cable. I started selling shoes in July 1991, after I finished my HND in the UK, and later sold suits, but I stopped in 1998 and I started real estate development and purchase of property in 1997. I also noticed that many Nigerians at that time were reluctant to go into construction, but I believed anything was possible with God on my side. I built over 50 projects in London and Manchester, and from there went to South Africa where I built a number of estates. Anywho, he began in 1997 working on 113 Albion Drive, London Fields in East London. The company would build developments in various countries during this time. Also, at this time he became an evangelist for the Celestial Church of Christ and would often preach on the church's TV channel. So his next development would be back in his native Nigeria in the expensive Ikeo district. The project was to be called 360 Degrees Towers and would have three luxury high-rise buildings. The project began in early 2019 on Gerrard Road. It is one of the more expensive roads in the area and is not far from Coca-Cola Nigeria's headquarters. 
All three towers were approved by the local authorities to have a floor count of 15 storeys, with each apartment having a starting price of a reported $1.2 million. At the helm of the construction was Femi himself, with m and Engineer, Degdi Global Services, Structural Engineer, Prowess Engineers Limited and Architect Voltron Company. Although details on the building's design aren't very clear, they were constructed with a pretty standard reinforced concrete slab supported by reinforced concrete columns. The development would prove to be rather popular, with around 65% sold off plan. Not bad when looking at the starting prices of over a million US dollars. At some point during the project, Tower 3's plan of 15 storeys was extended to 21, but the planning authority was not informed of this. Now, during construction, after each floor was completed, a test had to be undertaken to assess the quality of the concrete. On the first two buildings, and up to the fourth floor of the third, tests conducted showed the concrete to be of acceptable standard. All good, but Prowess Engineering Limited would withdraw from the project using the following letter. Re. Proposed Jared Towers for Four Scores Limited reads. This letter is to formally inform you of the withdrawal of our structural consultancy services from the above named project. We arrived at this decision due to the fact that we no longer share the same vision with you as our client in terms of how the project is being executed. We can guarantee the integrity of the first two buildings and also works done up to the fourth floor of the third building supervised by us, provided specifications have been met in terms of the required concrete strength. This we do not have control over as we do not have the concrete cube tests for each stage of the building till date. Furthermore, we request that our company name and logo be removed from the project board and also kindly notify all necessary approving authorities of our withdrawal from the project. Something was most certainly not right, but Femi continued on with the construction. However, the project would continue for over a year until June 2021, when the Lagos State Building Control Agency closed the site down. This was due to reported anomalies in the construction process. Although shut down, work would secretly continue against the authorities' apparent knowledge. The third tower would continue to rise, well, until gravity would bring it down. The disaster. It is the 1st of November 2021, and construction work is cracking on at 360 degrees towers. The project lead, Femi Osabona, is on site with his assistant alongside him. Workers are fitting out the three towers, which are in various states of completion. Although an exact number isn't known, it has been estimated that between 60 and 100 workers are on site today. Cracking sounds began ringing out around 14.44 in the afternoon. Within a minute, a massive crashing sound rang out. The entire structure collapsed into its footprint, crushing all within. As soon as the dust settled, anyone around the area flooded into the disaster scene, pouring through rubble and pulling out bodies and survivors alike. As rescue workers searched the ruins, cries for help could be heard. However, as the days went on, less and less survivors were found. Eventually, the missing list became the list of the dead. Rescue workers came under criticism, as diggers were used to uncover areas, but in doing so, covered over other sections of the ruins. Many of the responders were not properly trained, resulting in covering over potential survivors. A week or so after the digging, the death toll was estimated to be around 50. One body was dragged out from the rubble and was found to be project lead Femi Osabona. The aftermath. Building collapses are a rather common thing in Lagos. Apart from giving Florida a run for its money in self-deconstructing buildings, it shows a general disregard for building regulations and its enforcement. An investigation was announced by Governor Samuel Ulo, who inaugurated a six man panel to investigate the cause of the collapse. They came back with a verdict of improper building materials and practices, noting an absence of the required information on the hoarding outside the project. This should have had contact names and company information. However, the results of the report were not made public as the BBC would report in September 2024. However, the coroner in charge of finding the cause of death wasn't so closeted in their remarks, again from the BBC. Chief Magistrate Oyetede Komalefe 
attributed the building collapse to the irresponsibility and negligence of the government agencies that were supposed to approve and supervise the plans and construction. Interestingly, during the site survey post-collapse, another fourth building was discovered. Apparently, this too had no proper permission for construction. Local authorities also claimed that they had not even heard of the company behind the project, Fourscore Homes, and post-collapse, the company was completely uncontactable almost as if they had just vanished into thin air. The apparent mystery behind the company is not unheard of in the Nigerian property industry, as there are barely any ramifications for not following the rules. On top of that, accusations of bribes and false certificates are rife. And the cherry on top of the concrete cake, the state of Lagos in 2021 only had around 100 building inspectors for a population estimated to be close to 35 million, where thousands of construction projects are underway each year. This plays into the project expansion, which went seemingly unchallenged. The third tower apparently was originally planned to only be six floors, which was then changed to 12, then 15, and then finally the fateful 21 floors. Although substandard construction materials were put to blame, there may have been another initiating event. In an anonymous interview with a worker in Premium Times NG, works were being done on the first floor to replace cracked columns. This involved knocking them out to be replaced at a later date. One column that was being removed began to shake shortly before the building fell down. This was being done under the instruction of Femi Osabona and other engineering contractors. The idea of knocking out a supporting column to then rebuild is an insane thing to me, which just shows how out of depth the company behind the project was. On every level, the project was doomed, all in the pursuit of profit. So to answer my question at the beginning of the video, no, Osabona probably wasn't a Nigerian Icarus, instead just another developer chancing their arm, which in this case didn't work out well for him. The remaining towers were demolished, but not without drama as investors tried getting their money back. So it's scale time, it's going to be a 5, and this is what I've got for my root cause analysis card. Do you agree? Please let me know in the comments below. This is a Plain Difficult production. All videos on the channel are Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike licensed. Plain Difficult videos are produced by me, John, in a currently very cold corner of Southern London, UK. And all I have to say is thank you very much for watching. And Mr. Music, can you play us out, please?